This time last week, much of America was watching in shock as Buffalo Bills defense player Damar Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest after making a tackle against the Cincinnati Bengals. What ensued after? CPR on the field and Damar Hamlin being taken to a Cincinnati hospital fighting for his life. The conversation continued surrounding heart disease as questions still speculate as to what exactly was the cause of DeMar Hamlin's uh, heart condition. The issue of heart disease once again talked about and raised. When we talk about heart disease, it was the leading cause of death in Hispanic males in 2018 and the second leading cause of death in Hispanic females. Now scientists had to, tar to target to assess the risk in population, evaluating the heart's function and the relationship between the heart and the aorta. Joining us now to share more details is Director of Clinical Cardiology Research and Cardiovascular Epidemiology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Dr. Carlos Rodriguez. And uh, Dr. Rodriguez, we're glad to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, very serious conversation that people are having today, particularly when it comes to uh, heart disease. And I'll talk demographics in a moment, but can we just get down to the specifics of what exactly is heart disease? Yes, yeah, so um, let's focus on, on heart failure. So, you know, heart disease has many components. Heart failure is a major component of heart disease. More than 6 million Americans are living with heart failure and over 900,000 new cases of heart failure are diagnosed every year. Heart failure simply means that the heart isn't pumping as well as it should be. Normally, your heart, our hearts, um, when they're normal, they're able, the heart is able to pump blood throughout the entire body. But sometimes the heart becomes too weak or too stiff, making it unable to pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. Now, coronary artery disease or blocked coronary arteries is a major risk factor for heart failure, but heart failure can occur even when there are no blocked coronary arteries. Yeah. So I know there's some study that's going on with regards to this. You're very uh, integral in that. Talk to me about the importance of this study and what you're able to determine. So with, with our study um, at present, we are uh, looking at um, how the heart is able to pump oxygen carrying blood throughout the rest of the body. Now for the heart to do this, uh, it needs the, the aorta. The heart is connected to the aorta. So there is an intimate relationship between the heart and the aorta. The aorta is the major blood vessel of the body. Now, um, work from our group of doctors suggests that because the heart and the aorta are so intimately connected, if, if there is something wrong with the relationship and interaction between the heart and the aorta, then the heart may not work as well in pumping blood. Now, this means that the heart and the aorta have, need to be in sync. Uh, when they're not, that reduces the heart's ability to pump blood throughout the rest of the body, and this can be a risk for heart failure. So our study will be the first to, to look at both the heart's relationship and interaction with the aorta at the same time in Hispanics. So you have the study of Latinos and Hispanics, and you're looking at that when it comes to the heart issue and uh, when we talk about Hispanics, Latinos, heart, what can you give us in terms of statistics and what do we need to know so far? Well, you know, at present, almost 20% of the U.S. population self-identifies as Hispanic uh, or Latino. And that per percentage is expected to increase to 29% by the year 2050. So currently, just given the fact right now that one, almost one in five persons in the United States um, are Hispanic, just given the sheer numbers, the overall health of the United States cannot get better without also improving the health of the Hispanic population. So what, we're, what, we've, what we've seen in prior work is that um, Hispanics are a high risk for heart failure. Now, we all need to be aware of this risk and take proper measures to prevent it. But unfortunately, historically, Hispanics have been underrepresented in heart failure clinical trials 
and epidemiologic studies. So it is very difficult to take action without knowing your risk. So my, my uh, study aims to help identify uh, the risk of heart failure among Hispanic Latinos in the United States. And so are you finding, uh, when it comes to your findings, are you hoping that there'll be some new treatments, some new things that we can actually roll out in the wake of all of this? Because uh, it's a pretty intense study, and hopefully uh, with your discoveries, that we'll be able to uh, make some much needed uh, ground, gain some much needed ground. Yes. Uh, well, as I, as I mentioned, I think, you know, it all starts with uh, identifying risk. And it's hard to take action without knowing uh, proper risk. So my study aims to determine if the relationship between the heart and the aorta can be used to identify persons at higher risk for heart failure among Hispanics. So our goal is that once we, uh, if we are able to, to utilize this uh, relationship between the aorta and the heart, more extensively in the Hispanic population, we can target persons uh, who, who are at risk for heart failure very early on and uh, thus provide proper treatment, diagnosis, and monitoring to uh, keep them healthy and prevent them from um, developing uh, heart failure. Dr. Rodriguez, how often should a person have their heart checked? Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a, a very good question. You know, one of the things that um, we know that we've learned is that um, definitely having uncontrolled risk factors um, for heart failure is something that can put a person at risk. The uh, major risk factors for heart failure are diabetes, high blood pressure, and obesity. Uh, unfortunately, Hispanics um, have some of the highest prevalence of uncontrolled risk factors. Uh, so I think it's important um, that um, all of us, including uh, Hispanics, non-Hispanics, we all need to lower our risk for heart failure by preventing these conditions if you don't have them. Um, if you do have these conditions, you need to prevent your risk for heart failure by controlling these conditions. So the important thing is for everyone to know their risk um, and take action. And uh, part of doing that is, is getting heart check, your heart check. And I would recommend at least once or twice a year to, to do that. And what's gonna be your approach when you talk about looking at this and having people uh, be able to talk about assessing and seeing where they are as far as their heart health is concerned? Uh, what's your approach in terms of dealing with that? Well, you know, I think, I think that uh, um, we try to educate uh, persons about their risk. As I mentioned, unfortunately, the Hispanic population has been underrepresented in studies identifying heart failure and identifying heart failure risk. So education uh, among Hispanics is key, but education among all populations is key. Um, we, so, so for me, my approach first starts with um, educating persons about their risk and then letting, uh, letting the person, uh, once they know their risk, to take appropriate action. Um, that action obviously involves uh, uh, lifestyle changes, being very uh, aware of things that can impact uh, your risk for diabetes, your risk for high blood pressure, your risk for obesity, and having those things in check, um, developing a healthy diet as much as possible, and also um, developing an active lifestyle where you can incorporate uh, physical activity, some form of regular physical activity on a regular basis several times a week. I think that all those things are important uh, to prevent uh, heart failure risk. Yeah. And uh, you know the news of the day, talking about Damar Hamlin, uh, as uh, one who works in the heart field and, uh, you know, you're watching, talk to me about 
just your thoughts and what you were able to take away from this. Yes, uh, um, my heart goes out to um, Damar, his family, um, his loved ones. Uh, definitely a tragic event. Something that, uh, unfortunately, as a cardiologist, we do see often. Um, persons undergoing cardiac arrest, needing CPR. Um, I, I only hope and pray for uh, the best possible outcome um, for Damar. Uh, you know, when we talk about risk and risk for heart disease, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, a lot about Latinos, but Blacks and Latinos are populations that carry high risk for heart disease compared to non-Hispanic whites. And this is just a um, fact. And I think in knowing that, that elevated risk that we carry, um, it's important to know that risk and understand um, what your family history is for heart disease, what risk factors you may have. And as, as we've uh, already discussed earlier, um, getting a heart check, getting a heart check at least once or twice a year. And that, that starts at the minimum with an electrocardiogram, an ECG, and possibly depending on what your family history is or what your risk factors are, um, also uh, an echocardiogram. Um, but, you know, these are things to be discussed with your um, healthcare provider, uh, with your cardiologist. And, um, you know, hopefully by uh, knowing and understanding your risk, you can prevent, um, um, you know, any future types of uh, um, tragedies or catastrophic events. Um, by being able to take action once you, you actually know your risk. Um, Dr. Carlos Rodriguez, want to thank you so much for being with us and uh, definitely want to thank you for sharing uh, and letting us know uh, what we need to know with regards to this. Uh, Dr. Rodriguez, Director of Clinical Cardiology Research and Cardiovascular Epidemiology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Now, if you want more information, please visit the website at einsteinmed.edu. And then follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Einstein Med. Don't go anywhere. We've got more open coming up right after this.